Hey guys, it's Mike. Uh, as you know, I've done a lot of videos on Unraid servers, and this one's no exception. You've seen me build uh, an Unraid server as sort of an experiment to replace my old QNAP. I originally had two drives in it. I expanded it to three drives. I added a cache drive. Then I outgrew the case it was in, so you saw me build it into a newer tower case. Well, eventually you do need to expand capacity again, and today I'm going to show you how you can add uh, more drives into your Unraid server um, through software. And I'm actually adding two additional 4 terabyte drives to the server. These are two Seagate drives I pulled out of a desktop system I had. They're actually some of the older drives that I've got uh, in my stock. Um, and you'll see I mentioned it in the video, they're not drives I would normally put into a, a RAID 5 configuration. They're not drives that I would put into um, even the QNAP server. But Unraid is a bit different. As I've explained before, the drives operate independently and are protected with the parity drive. They're not operating in a Stripe fashion. So uh, I'm pretty confident that it's a good application for these drives to put them into an Unraid server. So I'll show you how to do that. I've already added the drives into the hardware, and I'm going to go through and show you how to configure them in the software. There's basically three steps you need to go through. First is you're going to run a pre-clear script on the drive. And what this does is it basically allows Unraid to go through and test that drive and look for any bad sectors that may or may not exist on the drive. Um, if it's a new drive or even a used drive that you've used for other applications, you definitely want to do this because you don't want your drive to fail with your data, right? So if there's bad sectors, you want to find out right away and flag them. So what pre-clear does is go through every sector on a hard drive, reads and writes to it, does several passes, and if there's a sector that's not returning the data that was written, that sector gets marked as bad. That's the first part. Um, the second part of it is you're going to uh, add that drive into your array. So you stop your array. First time you've had to do that. Up till now, your, your system completely operates normally, and the Unraid operating system takes care of the pre-clearing as a separate task. But now, after you've done your pre-clearing, you're going to stop your array, you're going to add the new drive or drives into your array and you're going to see they're going to show up as unmountable. What that means is you need to format them. So you're going to run a format command. That runs, takes anywhere between 10 and 30 minutes, it's not long at all. And at that point, you're up and running with your new drive. So let's go through, I'll show you how to do it. And by the way, um, I, I, like I said, I mounted two 4 terabyte drives into the server. Um, I'm walking you through adding the first one into the array, and then while I was doing post editing, I was adding the second one into the array, and the second one actually found a bad sector. So if you stay tuned past the end of this video, uh, you'll see what that looks like in case you're curious. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you like what I'm doing here, I'd love a thumbs up, and I'd love to, sub to subscribe. i got a lot more coming. So with nothing further to say, let's go on and uh, show you how to do this. This is Mike. Mike. What we're going to do today is go ahead and add two new hard drives into my Unraid server. And there's a few tricks to this. And you can see when we're starting off here, I've already installed the drives into the server box. So you can see I've got two unassigned devices right here. Uh, SDB and SDC. And they're both 4 terabyte Seagate drives that I've taken out of one of my desktop systems. Um, Unlike the other drives that I've got up here, this HGST, this uh, Western Digital, and the other HDST, uh, these are actually not NAS rated drives. I would never use these into a RAID 5 configuration, and I wouldn't use them, for example, in a free NAS configuration. But for Unraid, since the drives pretty much operate independently along with a parity drive, and I'm really only using this as a media server, nothing really mission critical, I feel comfortable putting them in there. So, what we're going to want to do is add these into the array. So to start off with that, first thing you're going to want to do is you would normally take your array offline, add them into the array, and start the array back up. But one of the problems you're going to have when you do that is because these drives have never been in an Unraid server before, the system's going to go ahead and clear them. Now that clearing them can take quite a bit of time. Often 15, 16 hours is not unusual. You can use the server during that period of time. 
the drives will remain offline, but the rest of the array will remain online and usable. We're going to show you another way you can go about doing this, uh, and that's doing a pre-clear. So you go to the apps screen, let it update, and you go up here to the search box and type in pre-clear and search. And it comes up with this pre-clear disk uh, add-in. So go ahead and click on that. And it's going to install. And you'll see here, plug in installed, and you're done. So click on done. The next thing you want to do is go over here and click on the plugins tab. And it'll pull up a list of the plugins you have installed in your server. If you have a message that pops up about submitting um, pre-clear usage data, you can either install or dismiss that. Um, that's entirely up to you. It's just basically to help the developers improve the product, um, but it doesn't affect what you're going to do either way. So in my system, if I scroll down, I get here where it says pre-clear disks. So it's now clearly installed. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And it shows me my two unmounted volumes. Okay, so I've got my first and second Seagate uh, disks. They're both four terabyte. And what I do over here is I go ahead and click start pre-clear. Once I do that, this pop-up comes up. And you have a bunch of options here. You've got the actual script you can run. Um, this one comes pre-installed when you download this from the Community Application Center. You can install other scripts, but I really don't see a need to. This is supported. It's supported by Unraid, and it does what it needs to do. Uh, you have a couple different options here. Uh, clear, which is what it says, going to clear the disk. It'll write uh, to every sector on the disk and read it back uh, just to make sure the disk is working as it should so you don't lose any data later. Um, you can just verify the disk, which doesn't actually do a clear. It just reads everything. Uh, verify the master boot record only. Um, not recommended. I mean, if you know this disk is good and you want to get it up and running rapidly, that's an option. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. You really, I mean, it's your data. Do what you want, but I would recommend you just do a proper clear. Uh, you can also erase all the disk, which will just basically destroy all the data that's out there. Um, good if you want to give your drive away, I guess. Uh, and erase and pre-clear the disk, basically. Um, you can also have it notify you when the process is finished either on your browser at every cycle end it goes through uh, I believe four different three or four different cycles or every 25 percent of the progress uh, I'm gonna go ahead and check that actually I'm just gonna make it at the end I don't really need to monitor this whole thing and also not recommended but you can skip the pre-read and the post read uh, to make things go faster I'm gonna check them just for purposes of this demo in a production environment or something you're actually trusting your data to I would leave these unchecked. Next, go ahead and click Start. And you'll see up here, Starting. And you can pretty much walk away, go do something else right now. This is going to take quite a long time. So check back every now and then, uh, see when it's completed. You can click on this little eyeball here, which is a preview. It'll give you a kind of what's going on, zeroing in in progress. Uh, gives you the average speed. This is dynamic. This does update your write speed. Uh, elapsed time. Let me center that because I think the right side got cut off, but you get the idea. And we're just going to let that run, and I'll return in a little bit. An update, as you can see here, we're now one hour and one minute into the pre clear process, and we're 15% done. So you get an idea how long this is going to take. Check back with you soon. And here we are, uh, several hours later, and you can see you got a notification on my screen, pre-clear pass, pre-cleaning disk uh, finished, and you can see here, pre-clear finished successfully. I can view the log right here if I want, the preview log. Uh, this shows me success, success, success. And at this point, I'm ready to add this disk into the array. So that's my SDB device. 
and I'll go ahead and start to pre-clear on the SDC in a second. But let me show you how to add this disk to the array at this point. So I go back to main and I take the array offline, I stop it. This will stop the array. Click OK. And you'll see down here, spinning up all drives, stopping services. And the array is now stopped. So at this point, your server is essentially offline. Nobody's going to be able to connect to it and uh, access any files. So I can scroll down here and I can see, obviously, my cache drive, boot device. I uh, notice I don't see um, unallocated devices at this point, but I can see I've got right now um, a disk allocated to my parity drive. I don't have a second parity drive allocated. I can see my three disks that were already in place before, the two HDSDs and the WDC, all four terabyte NAS drives. And slots four through 22 are currently unassigned. So I'm going to go ahead and do slot four. And there's that SDB device, which is the first Seagate drive, and that's the one I just pre-cleared. So I go ahead and click allocate on that. All device on this disk will be erased when the array is started. That's perfectly normal. Um, I'm not going to allocate disk 5 yet. I did not pre-clear that. If I did, it would go through a clearing process and it would be sometime tomorrow before that disk could come online. So I'm just going to allocate the new 4 terabyte that I pre-cleared onto disk 4. And at that point, I can go ahead and start my array. Mounting disks, starting services. And there's disk 4. You notice, you'll see right here that that new disk I put on is now labeled unmountable. When you see that, don't panic. All it means is, even though the disk is pre-cleared and ready to go, you'll, still, you'll see down here it says unmountable disk present. It needs a file system on it. So we've cleared the drive, but it hasn't really been set up with a file system so we can do anything with it yet, so it can actually join the array as a productive, uh, as a productive drive to the server. So, format will create a file system in all unmountable disks, discarding all data currently on those disks. So in other words, anything you may have previously had on there, if it managed to survive the unclear, which it didn't, um, it's going to be wiped out at this point. So I'm going to click uh, Yes. I want to do this. And I'm going to go ahead and click Format. And you're going to see here Formatting. started formatting and as soon as the formatting is done it's going to go ahead and uh, be mounted and join the array. Here we go again you can see the drive is now completely formatted I've got an extra four terabytes of storage added to my array and files will be allocated to that drive uh, based on the share rules that you create so So I go share rules, I click add share. You can see here we've got these rules here for allocation method, high water, uh, fill up, most free. And that's really how Unraid's gonna decide how to allocate files to your new drive. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go and pre-clear the second drive that I have added to the system. And the way I can do that is I can just go out here to tools, and go down to pre-clear. If you remember before I showed you how to get to it through the uh, through the plugins menu. So with the plugins and went down to pre-clear. Well you can do the same thing here through the tools menu. But anyway you now get the gist of how to add a new drive to your Unraid server. Pre-clear I think uh, makes a more comprehensive uh, add-on and it allows you to clear the uh, it allows you to clear the drive before you get to add it to the array. 
So, this is Mike, and thanks for joining me, and talk to you all soon. This is Mike again. I just wanted to show you something that came up at the end of pre-clearing my second drive that we didn't see on the first drive. And if I go here, you can see pre-clear finish successfully, pre-clear pass for disk SDC. So that's the second Seagate drive I had added into this system. I'm going to dismiss that message. And I'm going to go ahead and look at the preview of what just happened. Now, if you look, before it just said success, success, success here, that was the end of it. But <coughs> if you look at this report, I'm also getting a smart status default. And basically what the problem is here is it found a bad block uh, during, the, uh, during the initial and the cycle one of the pre-clear phase. So that block will be marked bad and it won't be used uh, for data during the, the processing of, um, or during the storage of information on this disk. But it did tell you about it. Uh, attention, please look at a smart report for drive health issues. It's basically just telling me about that one bad block. So this is not critical. That's pretty normal with hard drives occasionally. But I did just want to point it out to you. Um, this and the other Seagate are the two oldest drives I've got, so I'll be keeping an eye on the smart reports for these just to make sure there's uh, no additional issues. Um, but if something were to go bad, I've still got a parity drive. I could replace it. And I hate to waste the drives. So, so there's that.